Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us on The Great Arising. This is Melissa Dietrich, and I'm Annette Biggers, and we're going to talk about my favorite subject um, in the whole world today, and that is healing, healing for all. Um, and I just want to remind you of a few things that Jesus taught us before we get into the subject so that you can um, resist any walls of resistance that might come up for you to believe what Jesus taught. You know, there's uh, doctrines that we've believed, there's theologies, there's all kinds of things that we've believed through the years um, that God is just trying to tear down, down those walls or those veils that keep you separated from him, from receiving from him. And so that's our attempt today is to help you to see more than you did before, to hear him clear. Everyone hears God already. We want to help you hear him better. We want to remove those veils, those walls, those things that have kept you um, imprisoned in your perception. And so whatever we can do to help you with that is my endeavor. Um, okay, so I just want to uh, read to you in Matthew. Oh, it's right up here. Matthew chapter five verse 45. Um, he's talking about loving those who persecute you, um, you know, and, and this is a sh shared love. This is a, a love that you share and you, you show to the person. This isn't a thinking thing. Um, faith and love and all of that has an action. I used to teach my friend, my uh, kids when they were little, honor is not a mindset. It is an action. You must show honor. So when you see the old woman going into the store before you, it's not enough to say, oh, I honor her. No, you need to run up there and open the door and show her honor. Honor is a verb. It's an action word. And when you express honor, things happen in your life. You know this if you've ever been to Bethel Church. There's such honor, expressed honor for the Holy Spirit there. And if you go and worship there, you'll feel a resonance in your, you will literally feel a difference in your body. You will feel tingling. You'll feel stuff that you haven't felt before. Perhaps you could see things you haven't seen before and even hear God clearer. What is happening is the airwaves are being cleared for the presence of God to come into the place and honor opens that door. Okay. So Jesus is telling them, pray for those who persecute you. Pray for them. He knows that you're going to open a, a window of blessing when you actually express love for people who do not love you. And he says, for that will reveal your identity as children of your heavenly father. He is kind to all. He didn't say he is kind to the believers. He is kind to all by bringing the sunrise to warm and the rainfall to refresh, whether a person does what is good or evil. You see, God is good to you, no matter if you're good or evil. No matter if you're doing right, this is the grace of God. God never changes. He does good things to evil people. Why? Because he is good and only good. And it's never based on what a person is doing. We cannot earn, work for, or deserve the grace, the healing power of God. We can never earn it. It is simply who God is. He is the healer. And he's pouring out healing um, to anyone who comes to him. Notice that Jesus didn't chase people down to go get them healed. We don't have one Bible story where he was chasing people down. Like he wasn't looking for people to heal. They were coming to him. And what moved them, faith is movement, by the way. It's not thinking. It's not sitting on your access. <laughs> uh, we all have the access of heaven, but we're sitting on it. Many of us are sitting on the access of heaven. Um, and, and so 
these people are moved by faith. They've heard rumors about Jesus. He's the healer. He's the Messiah. And they're coming to him. And that movement towards him, moving closer to him, opens a, a window of blessing. It opens the gates of heaven so that healing can pull through or, or can come through to them. And so their faith and coming to Jesus, the healer, was the it was the perfect energy force, life force to make healing happen. Okay. So when you think of this, when you think of these things, um, don't think, well, oh, you know, he could never teach me anything about this because he's not a Christian or he doesn't know anything about health or healing or because he's not saved. Let me remind you, Jesus healed um, three fourths of his ministry time was spent healing people and the bodies of unsaved people. They were not saved. They were, in fact, he was healing the, the, uh, sinners, the fair, not the Pharisees, the Pharisees didn't come to him for healing, but he, he would have healed the Pharisees had they come to him in faith, but he was healing the bodies of, of sinners, people that did not deserve it. You know, so, um, okay, here we go. <laughs> the technology of healing. Do you know that there is technology right now in the world to heal every person on this earth right now there it's already been discovered. It's already working. There's already thousands and thousands of uh, testimonies. And I watched some of the lectures from the scientists. Um, about this technology this week. And I have a whole bunch of notes here. And I'm just going to read to you what these unsaved scientists have said. And I want you to think in your mind, you too, um, of any Bible verse that just like comes to your mind where you're like, uh, they're like, literally, are, are they reading the Bible? Like, they must be, you know, but this is what happens. The Lord wants every person healed on the earth. Why? Because when healing comes to even the unsaved person, the kingdom of God has come upon them. And when the kingdom of God has come upon them, then the uh, saving part and the deliverance part can follow after. It's like it opens a person's mind to the goodness of God, gives them faith that they actually have purpose and meaning. And there's someone who gave them that purpose and meaning, and they will literally seek for the savior more than they would have dying in their bed. Right. And, and the Lord wants no more evil on the earth. He wants no more evil. He wants heaven to make it to earth. He wants uh, all of the earth to be in the glory of God, literally to be uh, filled with the glory of God. That is his heart. That is what he wants most. So I'm going to read you some of my notes from non-Christian scientists who have discovered healing technology and it can uh, heal every person in the world. Okay. So let me just read you some of those notes. Okay. And you guys be thinking about how this lines up with God and in the Bible, because you all are Bible scholars. So the power that made the body wants to heal the body. <laughs> that was the first thing that they said. The power that made the body wants to heal the body. <laughs> hmm, who's the power? <laughs> who's the power that made the body? <laughs> He's also the healer. Imagine. Okay. When the body has the right energy and information, it wants to heal everything. The right information, the right energy. Okay. Uh, I could, I could uh, think of that as right energy is hope. Mm -hmm. Hope is an energy. Yeah. You were saying yesterday, can you share what you were uh, sharing with me yesterday about just like the, the songs, the songs? Yeah. Praises. Yeah. Um, one of the songs I grew up here, I'm just gonna let Diane in. One of the songs I grew up singing is you are my hiding place. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. 
whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. And so that's from Psalm 32, 7. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. And so when, when I'm going through something, I sing. <laughs> and it creates like this force field around you of hope and love and joy. And your mind is set on the song. And I've also heard um, scientists and people talk about when you sing, you breathe differently mm -hmm. and how that helps activate your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your calming nervous system. And so these songs of deliverance, getting them inside of your mind, which often a lot of them are based on scripture, like the one I just sent you, which is even doubly powerful because the word of God is living and mm -hmm. active and sharper than a double-edged sword. Because remember, we're not fighting our family or our friends or whoever relationship coworkers we're having a problem with. We battle not against flesh and blood. So we're using the word of God as a sword. But yeah, I was just thinking of the technology of just having a song in your heart surrounding you know surrounding yourself with it singing it imagining the angels singing it with you <laughs> and it's just like this beautiful dance this beautiful dance with the trinity around you with this song um because also it's important that we use our imaginations to imagine you know the unseen realm which is more seen which is more real than what we can see mm -hmm, mm -hmm. imagine the unseen realm par partnering with us the trinity partnering with us the angels partnering with us um staying in that peace um because the peace is in you then you can say to the storm be still be still mm -hmm. and that reminds me too of how jesus said that you have eyes but you don't see you have ears but you don't hear well is he condemning us by saying that no no no, no. he's inviting us to see mm -hmm. to hear and you just said, you know, like using your imagination and yeah. uh, seeing beyond the physical. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. So let me continue. That was about what, what Melissa just brought up is a powerful force field around you yeah. of song, of deliverance, of hope. And, and it creates a different energy. So they said, when the body has the right energy and information, it wants to heal everything. Hmm. Okay. This is from, <laughs> this is from secular scientists. <laughs> Let's just take a review here. The power that made the body wants to heal the body. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. When the body has the right energy and information, it wants to heal everything. Okay. That might be why I am so uh, determined or why I have such a, like, uh, a desire to see everyone healed is because when you have the right information and the right energy, you want to go heal everything in the world. And the world is actually waiting for you. Check out Romans chapter eight. The world is groaning. All of creation is groaning for the sons of gods to be revealed. You, your identity to be revealed to you, but also revealed to the world. Because when you're revealed, you're going to walk in your authority and you will heal everything and everyone in your pathway. Okay, so. Uh, those of you who had joined a little late, we are talking about a scientific um, technology that has been discovered that will heal the human body of everything, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and they have thousands and thousands of testimonies. And guess who is going against it? It starts with a PH, but we won't say the word. Okay, so number three... <laughs> is the body wants to function per perfectly. The body wants to per uh, function perfectly, okay? It's almost like a code was written on your body. You don't have a special body that wants to be diseased or sick. Your body wants to function perfectly. We are jumper cables. Okay, now this is a different point. We are jumper cables for light force, light force or life force energy to flow to others hmm to touch the heart and awaken us to remind us why we are here and who we are okay i'm going to say it again these are non-christian scientists who are discovering these things okay <laughs> remember matthew 5 
the rain falls on the unrighteous and the righteous. God's, God's heart is raining down on all people. He, people are discovering the technology. They are discovering what heals the body. And I'm telling you, this is going to drive them right into the Savior, to Jesus, the healer. I, I, I know it will. This is God's plan. God's plan wants himself to be discovered. And he wants how he does things to be discovered. He has no secrets from us. The only reason they're called mysteries is because we don't know them yet. And we get the mysteries of God when we seek after his heart. He shares them with us. Okay, so I'm just going to read that again. The body wants to function per uh, perfectly. We are jumper cables. Us. We are jumper cables for light force or life force energy to flow to others. Hmm. Laying on the hands. I can think of all kinds of biblical examples of this um, to touch the heart and awaken us to remind us why we are here and who we are identity, right? Oh my goodness. Uh, I wish the church knew this kind of stuff, the church at large, <laughs> um, spiritual science or technology to create spiritual to science and technology is used to create quantum leaps of consciousness to bypass projected realities. Okay, that's a little bit um, uh, complicated there, but just think that spiritual technology, God opening our eyes to see the unseen and hear what we haven't heard before, is creating quantum leaps of consciousness, of knowing, um, to bypass projected realities, realities of your life. There are these projected realities. There are lies that we are living. We are living in a bunch of lies of the enemy. And this is why the whole world is groaning. It wants to be uh, released from its subject to decay. Mm. That's what it says in Romans eight, the world has been subjected to decay. And, and this is what it desires. It has a natural desire to want to be released from captivity of decay. It says this in Romans eight, just check that out. Um, we need to call forth all the way this is this was very interesting i thought not being a christian or a professed christian that i thought this was a very interesting thing that she said we need to call forth all the wisdom of those who have gone before us to fulfill all the promises prophecies and prayers of all of those people of our forefathers um, science is the discovery of truth. So science is basically just discovering what is, what is the reality, not the false reality that we live in. Science is discovering truth. And what she's saying is truth changes the information in your body. And when you receive truth, it heals the body. <laughs> Imagine Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is talking about a, a spiritual, unseen um, energy force. It's himself. He is the energy force. The Holy Spirit is the energy force that creates all of life, heals all of life, and makes all things back to the way he designed it. This is his desire. And the fact that these scientists are discovering this is just mind blowing. Okay, the next thing, the cells vibrate and resonate with truth. <laughs> Come on, you can, I'm just, I was so amazed by all of this. I don't know if you're as, as amazed as I am. Um, give I me am. just a thumbs up. I like, am. What? Yay, scientists. Come on, church. Would you please grab a hold of these things? Um, the cells vibrate and resonate with truth, life force, energy. Whenever you think of life force, think of Jesus. He is the life force. He's the light force. Come on. 
Uh, okay, so she went into this whole uh, part about how we've gotten damaged and uh, radiation damages the DNA. And we've, we've been among all kinds of radiation, 5G cell, like all kinds of radiation. And she even went into the fact that it doesn't, you don't have to focus on resisting 5G. You don't have to focus on resisting all this bad re radiation because you can actually create a force field within you. The kingdom of God is within you, my friends, within you that, that goes out. And they said something like two miles. That's so cool. <laughs> And so you're protected from all of this radiation, but not knowing these things, not knowing truth, not uh, embracing life force, not embracing the light of, of the kingdom of God, truth into yourselves, you will accept the false reality that you're dying, that your DNA, is, you're damaged, you're suffering, you're, you're diseased. And, and you'll focus on that. And that creates this uh, negative uh, force in your body that, that tears everything down. And so she said, basically radiation has damaged us um, so much. And that's, that's our, uh, that's their, um, um, their endeavor is to reverse all of that in people. And I thought it was amazing that she said so many times it's about unif being unified because we are better together. Who else says mm -hmm. that? God, right? We need each other. We need him. We are all a part of the body of Christ. When we are together and unified, we have peace and we have harmony and we have all these things. It creates this energy force that cannot be um, destroyed by any amount of radiation. In fact, right. there won't be any radiation left when this happens in the church. I promise you. Okay. Yeah. This is the next thing. Thank. They go into the, the concept of Thanksgiving, my friends, do you know, <laughs> do you know that Thanksgiving is one of the, um, the four points that I talk about in healing rooms, because it's that powerful, people will get healed just by thanking God every day uh, for something. Thank because... you, God, for a net. <laughs> Thank you, God, for a net. <laughs> so the other day, even, um, even the other day, I'm doing these exercises for my, um, my knees and I'm doing different exercises, things that I haven't done before, because, you know, if you do the same thing all the time, you do it mindlessly. You don't do, you don't even think about it. Right. When you go out walking for exercise, you don't think about it. Your legs just move. Right. <laughs> but when you do something new, you have to actually put intentional energy towards that. So I was doing these exercises with my knees for, for my knees and uh, strengthening muscles all around it. And I was literally having to focus on this area of my body. And I just, the, the Holy Spirit led me to say this, but I go, thank you. Thank you, knees. <laughs> you have taken me far. And, and I'm blessing you right now because you, you, um, you know, I, I don't even remember what I said, but I was saying, I just had this spirit of gratitude for what God has created me to be. He created me to be strong. He created me to have, um, strength until the day that I meet him in heaven and not to be diseased and sick. And so I just started talking to my body it's his creation. Thank you. Thank you for serving me. Thank you. You know, and uh, I didn't have problems with achy knees at all, at all yesterday. Anyway, so she goes into thank the body for functioning well. Hmm. <laughs> Gives light force to your cells. Now I did this yesterday in my uh, exercises before I had listened to her lecture. So when she said that, I'm like, I just did that. <laughs> it's almost like the Holy Spirit was pri uh, priming me to hear this from a scientist to say, actually, Thanksgiving, there is a life force in Thanksgiving, a resonance in it. There is because you're expressing thanks, 
thankfulness. It's not a thought in your mind. You're expressing it. You're putting it out there. It's creating an energy force that cannot be conserved. Uh, there's a, the, a law of conservation. Okay. Law of conservation says it cannot, you cannot start it and you cannot end it. <laughs> it's just like my Thanksgiving is joining up with the thankfulness of God. Mm -hmm. And it's this energy force and I am receiving from the heart of God all that he is when I align with his energy yeah. force, which is he's thankful. He, he like created the world and said, that is good. That is so good. Oh my goodness. Everything about you is lovely. He's even counted every hair on your head. That is like, he must be obsessed with you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I thought that was amazing. It gives life light force to your cells. Thanksgiving. Um, the great, oh, she said this, you guys listen to this. The great awakening cannot and will not be stopped. <laughs> that's like, that's like, like what Justin Paul Averson Ham says, like the apocalypse, we don't need to be afraid of the word apocalypse because apocalypse just means the revealing of the realms. Yeah. And it can't be stopped. The revealing, the you revealing know, of the increase of, the... of his government and peace, there will be no end. There's no stop to that. It's increasing. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. It's huge. You can't stop late. it. Yeah. So no matter what you hear in the news and what's going on, it looks like doom and gloom, right? But the the real the the real thing that's going on is it's being exposed so that we can take authority over it so we can do something about it the church can do something about it that the sons and daughters of god take up their authority and they pray just as god has asked us to to pray for those who persecute us to pray for the evil people to be released and set free from captivity we are going to start taking charge and we're going to be we're going to be fueled with an energy uh, to do that. And, and so of course he would want to expose what's evil. If it's not exposed, we don't know it's there. Right. <laughs> so praise God. Um, anyways, I wanted to read this from Helena. Uh, she says, or, 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 or is a Hebrew word that literally means spirit, life of life, light of life. Jesus is that light. That's so awesome. Thank you for sharing that Helena. Um, okay. Now, Let's see. Uh, healthy communities are coming together in unity. Yes. Um, let go of everything that doesn't serve your greatest love, greatest purpose, greatest identity. Let go of everything that does not serve God's best for you. This is coming from an un, a non unchristian. I don't know. She may be a Christian. She just isn't professing. Uh, she had a lot of scientific um, terms and she is like, she's kind of like an Elon Musk and has those kind of uh, scientific terms. And so uh, when she, every time she would say something like this, that made my, you know, my light bulb go, Dee! you know, that's <laughs> from the Bible. Oh my gosh. You know, I just wrote it down. Um, it was a very long lecture. Most people would never want to take that much time out to watch something like this. They would think it's boring, but that's why you're here, my friends, because you actually care. And this is the kind of, um, information that you want to feast on the information from God's heart so that you can deliver it to people in ways that they can understand it. Um, so let go of everything that does not serve your greatest love, your greatest purpose, your greatest identity. Um, okay, what are we focusing on? Okay, whatever you're focusing on is strengthening that. Can I share? Yes. That point? Yeah. Um, so another verse that I love um, when whenever I'm thinking of healing is is a is a verse that coincides with that. It's like what you're focusing on, and it's um, Romans eight eleven. And it says, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, so you're focusing on that, that you're the temple and he's living in you, you're the house of God. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because his spirit who lives in you. And so I like to imagine that, like if I'm experiencing pain or if someone's experiencing pain, just imagining the, the resurrected life of God pulsating through their body, giving life because that's what he does. He's a life-giving spirit. 
and he lives yeah. inside of us. Yeah. And um, I'm going to read an excerpt from one of my favorite books, Alignment by Chuck Perry, the director of The Healing Rooms. He says, um, but healing is not about getting it right. Healing is a free gift from God that we only receive because Jesus got it right. We are here to help each other receive that splendid gift that Jesus already paid for, never to discourage. And then he quotes Solomon, watch over your heart with all diligence for from it flow, flow the springs of life. And that's again, like what you're focusing on. I have found that when sickness and healing I have found that when sickness and healing is not a separate desperate event, but rather a violation of God's love that is trying to draw our awareness away from him, who is our life. I see more people healed when I stay in the intentional awareness of him in me and I in him established in the rhythm and breath of life flowing from God into this world. Let it come through me at any possible opportunity. Let me abide in the plumb line of heaven. Let all the assets of heaven pour through me into the needy and wounded and hurting and sick all, all around me all the time. And that's what we're focusing on. Like when we focus on I'm in him, he's in me. He, he, he raised from the dead. He raised others from the dead. And that, that power lives inside of me. When we just like close our eyes and imagine like what that would look like, mm -hmm. it is, it changes everything. Yeah. yeah. It changes everything. <laughs> Totally. And I did that too. When I, I was, I had some digestive issues for a long time and last year and going into earlier this year. And I, and I just sat down and I literally imagined heaven invading and what that would look like and the miraculous invading and just like taking my reality and making it heaven's reality instead of what I was experiencing mm -hmm. on the earth. And I, and I so was healed good. and I was healed. So that's one of my favorite verses to, to say and to meditate on. Um, so Myra asked in the comments who, what the doctor's name is, it's Dr. Sandra Michael. Um, and of course, everyone wants to shut her down. That's in the big pH. Um, <laughs> and um, of course they do. I mean, I have a friend who was knighted um, <clears throat> for reversing stage four cancer and lupus in so many people, they knighted him. So you, you can call him sir now, you know, and he lives here in America. He lives in Arizona and he has had so many death threats and same with uh, Sandra Michael, uh, Dr. Sandra Michael. She's had very many death threats because this is this technology that she has discovered literally can heal the entire world all of Africa, all of India, all of these people that have nothing, it can heal them. And her idea is that if everyone gets healed, their mind gets healed as well. There will be no more evil in the world when people get healed and are made whole. And that's like her heart. And there's many people that are uh, using her technology in their clinics and getting good results. And they, they want the same thing. They want the world to be healed. I think that's a God idea. Um, okay. Let me just go on here. Focus on what you want. It creates its own protection field around you. Uh, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be given to you. You know, when you focus on, um, on his goodness, it creates his own, its own protection field around you. This is what she's saying is this energy force field. It wards off every other negative radiation, the, the damaging yeah. radiation. Um, we were designed for being more powerful than every threat yeah. we, and this is the thing, you guys, the devil doesn't want you to know this. He doesn't want you to know that you are designed to be more powerful than every disease and every sickness. He yeah. wants you to stay in the um, fear, in the dark and in the fear. And um, what was I going to say? Um, I'm sorry. I just, I had a, uh, I was, it'll come back in a little bit, but um, she says we were meant to function and operate in a 70 to 90 millivoltage uh, rate of energy. And 
cancer cannot live in your body uh, until you're 20 or less. Mm. Okay. So the energy force in your body, it, it keeps everything, um, it keeps everything healthy, this energy force. Yeah. It's only when you, you uh, go below 20 milli, yeah. uh, millivoltages. Um, it's, it's so cool to even talk about this because when a lot of people hear about radiation and 5G, they just are like, ah, you know? But like and they focus on it, they focus on it, but <laughs> like afraid of it. when I'm, when I'm working in the healing rooms and people come in and they're just like glorifying their sickness because they've had it so long and it's keeping them. I love to use the, just the simple illustration that I heard probably from Chuck Perry or whatever. Like when you walk into a room and it's dark, what do you do to make the darkness go? You just turn the light on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, right. Look at the switch. <laughs> and so like I love that illustration because it's the same as this radiation mm -hmm. and stuff. You just turn the light on. Yeah. And yeah. it has to go. It can't stay. You know, I can't believe she said this, but <laughs> Joseph Prince has been teaching this for years and years mm. and years. She said, being aware of holiness is key. Do you know, my friends, you are holy. Jesus commanded you in Matthew chapter five to be holy. Therefore, as your father in heaven is holy, mm. he doesn't command you to do something that you can't do or can't be. You know what? He's not commanding you to actually do anything. He is telling you he is, he is, he wants holiness for you, not from you. Mm. And so when you focus on holiness, because you've been made holy, not because you became it on your own effort or striving. You are holy because God made you holy. He says this, he has made you holy. Not one day when you get to heaven, you already are right now. It's past tense. Okay. So she says, be aware of holiness. Being aware of holiness is key. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Um, there's a, da, 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 the only thing beyond, okay. The only thing beyond love is shared love. Uh, she says this creates an energy force field that heals the body. The enemy is, is always after to divide and conquer. She said that too. She says the enemy of your body wants to divide and conquer. This is why he wants to you to have walls of offense between you and your annoying mother-in-law, let's just say, or you and your annoying uh, friend down the street. He wants walls of offense because those walls of offense actually create a negative energy force around you. And it's called divide and conquer. If he can divide us, he can conquer. And she says, the only thing beyond love is shared love. So when, and this is, this is Jesus, uh, love your enemies as yourself, pray for your enemies. You know, he's not saying hate your enemies and pray against them, pray for them, pray for their blessing, because when God blesses them, they'll stop being annoying. <laughs> Imagine. Okay. And um, this is, this is the last few things that I took notes on fear of persecution. Fear of persecution brings more persecution. Now, I'm I'm imagining that she has had a lot of persecution over this, but she goes, the fear of it brings more of it. So all of you Christians out there that's watching this after um, this Zoom call here, and you're afraid of the future because of what you're seeing in the news, that is the enemy's plan. He wants you to be afraid. He wants you to fear persecution. He wants you to fear all of the end time dread and you know all of this stuff that's gonna be happening in the world. Why? Because he wants you to have it inside of you. He wants you to have that force field on the inside of you and, and so that you will not be a healer, that you will not have that energy force that goes out two miles or has the shadow of pe people that heal, you know, when you walk by them. Um, and then she said, quit sitting on your access, please quit sitting on your access friends. 
you have access to the kingdom of God. She didn't say this, but you have access to the kingdom of God. You have access to the healing power, the energy, the light force, the life force of God himself. Don't sit on it. Get out and literally let it out of you. Let it flow through your thinking, through your mouth. Bring the honor out of your mouth. Bring the thanksgiving outside of your mouth and express it. You will bring the um, you'll bring the energy life of God Himself. You will bring the presence of God Himself right in your midst. Um, they don't teach this in churches these days. Uh, so, my friends, I I employ you to go. Implore you to go and and be that person that actually is doing these things. Um, okay. So I want to end here. I've, I've got so much more to share with you, but I want to end here, uh, with a few Bible scriptures, uh, Isaiah 54, two increase is coming. So enlarge your tent and add extensions to your dwelling, hold nothing back, make the tent ropes longer and the pegs stronger. My friends, this, I asked my friend Rex, uh, about 10 years ago, what does that verse mean? Because someone prophesied it over me way back then. And I was like, what does it mean to enlarge your tent? What does it mean to strengthen your stakes and, and put your ropes out longer? He goes, Annette, it's all about mindset. It's all about what are you willing to believe and, and, and let God enlarge the capacity of you to see him, to know him, to hear him. You hear him a little bit right now, friends. I, every person does, but let's get rid of the veils. Let's get rid of the, the uh, scales over our eyes. Scales can be unforgiveness. Scales can be un, un, uh, unthankfulness. You know, what, what in your life do you just resent or hate? Get rid of it and start thanking God for that thing that brings you trouble. <laughs> thank him because, you know, not because of the trouble, but thank him because in your trouble, he is there with you and you're going through the storm. You're not stuck in it. And he is making you stronger through the storm. So when you come out on the other side, you are a warrior. <laughs> you're a warrior. You're going to get your whole neighbor heal, uh, neighborhood healed. You're going to get the city healed that you live in your family. Start with your family, right? Um, and the other uh, verse I wanted to share with you, um, I just have so many notes, my friends. I could share for 10 hours on this. Um, Martha said to Jesus, this is when Jesus has come to raise Lazarus from the dead. She says, he, uh, or Jesus says to Martha, he says, Martha, you don't have to wait until then. She's like thinking one day, yeah, you know, the, the dead will be resurrected. And he's like, no, 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 actually, you don't have to wait till then. I am the resurrection and I am life eternal. Anyone who clings to me in faith, even though he dies, will live forever. And, okay, there's more to this. Do, let's just back up. What did he just say? Anyone who clings to me in faith, faith, even though he dies, will live forever. So this person dies but he will live forever. And the one who live, the one who lives by believing in me will never die. Hmm. Uh, so there's two kinds of people. Jesus is saying some will die in faith and they still will live forever. But there are those that will live, that won't die. He's saying this. Those who live by believing in me will never die. So there's one type of person that, that will die, but because even though he dies, he will still live. But this next group of people will never die. <laughs> okay. So ask God about that scripture. Cause I'm not going to explain it to you <laughs> anymore. Um, I want to read some of our questions over here. And then I want to talk about a friend of mine, Tracy Bremer. She is, um, uh, um, struggling right now with cancer and we're going to, we're going to be powerful and we're going to pray for her. 
Uh, hold on, let me just see. Can you tell me the name of uh, the doctor or medical group that helped you? And the doctors are healing people, including with cancer. Okay, yes. So it's Dr. Sandra Michael. I think it could be Sandra Rose Michael. And it's called uh, EES something, energy something system. And they use light. They use the colors of the rainbow to create these um, energy force fields that uh, actually penetrate your body and give it, it's like giving your cells another message i think it's so funny they go into the colors of the rainbow and like red and they talk about red being all the red fruits that god created and when red goes into your body it's a light force mm -hmm. that gives like energy to your cells the, you know, every color of the rainbow, they use all the colors, they use light and um, just like light waves. Okay. The, that's the technology that they've created. Mm -hmm. And it literally is just giving uh, an energy to your body that it was always meant to live on. And, 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 and it's creating an environment. So your body can heal itself. Mm. God created. They also said this in the lecture, God created you, your body to heal itself. It wants to heal. I said that in the beginning, your body wants to be healthy. It wants to be whole. Um, and, and so you're already that the, the the odds are not stacked against you. The, you. They are in your favor. You are in the favor of God. The only thing that stops you is perception. It only you can stop the power of God from not flowing. Um, and, and so friends, if you're struggling right now, don't take any condemnation from this Right now, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you feel condemnation, just command it to go right now, because condemnation is what is killing your body. Mm -hmm. I tell you, condemnation, Joseph Prince preaches about this, and he said, the bottom line for sickness, the, the issue is condemnation. Wow and unforgiveness. It's all of that. It's like, you don't feel forgiven. You don't feel good enough. You don't feel loved. It's self condemnation. And it's all a lie. It's a lie. Jesus died to make you holy and you are already holy. And so when you focus on the truth, your cells get the message of truth mm. and energy fields start to um, activate in your body. And probably you go up to that 70, mm. 80 millivoltage uh, level where no cancer can um, exist. And this is the thing, when you're going to the doctor, the doctor is looking for what is wrong with you. I love doctors. They have, uh, many of them have great hearts and they have good intentions. Mm. They want people to be healed, but it's their job to find out what's wrong with you so that they can medicate it. Yeah. And medicine isn't all bad. Um, I tell people in the healing rooms, if you're on medic medication, keep taking it. Um, stop taking it when you're healed, when you're healed, when you have the doctors, okay, saying, yeah, you don't have that anymore. Um, it's not, you know, I know there's a lot of bad things with medication. And so I, I don't take medication very rarely. Do I ever even take an Advil? I think I had one a week or two ago, or, uh, maybe two or three of them. It was the first time in years. I think I've had an Advil. Um, but I don't take medicine. I didn't take it for my thyroid problem, none of that, but I don't want to condemn people that are on it because what can happen is it can, it can cover up a symptom for you so that you're not in stress. You know, when you're in pain, you're also mm -hmm. in stress, which is just like the snowball mm -hmm. effect in your body. You just, your stress is just creating more pain and more mm -hmm. suffering. And so medicine can be a help uh, to you um, with that. But um, what I'm trying to say is that doctors were, are supposed to diagnose you. They're supposed to find out what's wrong with you and they can put you accidentally on this, um, uh, just a focus of what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And my friends, even this doctor or this scient scientist, she said to be uh, focused, you, you need to be focused on holiness. 
on wholeness, because whatever you're focused on, you are, um, it's like you're, um, uh, you're magnifying it. That's yeah. why the Bible says to magnify the Lord, yeah. magnify him, magnify his work in you, magnify the kingdom of heaven that's within you that he said was in you. Yeah. And you will create this, the right energy force for yourselves to operate in. It's creating this environment. It's not really creating it. God created it. You're just aligning with it. Yeah. You're getting aligned with the, um, <laughs> yes, this book is so good. Let me read these other questions. Um, so people, including, yes, she is seeing people healed of cancer. Um, Lori, uh, wool and linen have the highest frequency in all fabrics. Yes. I've heard this known to man healing frequencies that God made their frequencies are 5,000 each. So cool. And by the way, I don't know if you knew this, uh, Helena, but if you wear wool and cotton together or linen, I mean, linen and wool together, they cancel each other out. <laughs> so you'll either want to wear only wool what? or only linen. How did you hear they're this? Both, like, this is so they're both 5,000, uh, um, <laughs> a frequency. So, um, yeah, anyways, um, I've never heard that. there's all kinds of things, you know, oil heals you. Um, this is why the Lord, I feel says anoint your head with oil. He created oil to go in you. I don't know if you know this. I, there's so many remedies out there that work castor oil, go do some research on castor oil. It's actually called the hand of Christ. The, 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 uh, leaf that it comes from, or the uh, plant that they make it from is called something Christus or something. And it means the hand of Christ and what they're, what a lot of people are finding or, uh, doctors, uh, holistic doctors are finding that castor oil can go into your body and remove and dissolve wow. extra, uh, calcium that has been you formed around your bone, but it won't, uh, take away the bone that you're supposed to have. It, it's amazing what castor oil does. It also will remove tumors. If you, if this is why castor oil compresses and packs on your abdomen, uh, for a few weeks can dissolve tumors. If this oil goes deep in and it does this work, mm. it, it's phenomenal what it does. Cayenne pepper is another remedy that will awaken dead parts of your body. Hmm. Wow. Amazing. It will close up a stomach ulcer, but it will widen a blood vessel. Come on, tell me God didn't design these things to work like this. <laughs> He's got all kinds of things out there for you, my friends, to help your body. He wants you to be healed more than you want to be healed. And he has created oils and, and uh, herbs. You know, there's a Bible, uh, there's a verse in the Bible, and I, I'd have to look it up, but it says herbs were made to serve man. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? God created herbs to serve man. It's in the Psalms. You can look it up. Uh, any insight into bl high blood pressure? High blood pressure is uh, thought of as being caused by inflammation. And so if you can get inflammation out of your body, that is the best way to cure high blood pressure. One of the things that I've learned recently too, because I struggled with edema. You guys know what edema is? It's like this uh, water in your legs. It just starts collecting around your ankles and, and it just makes your legs feel super heavy. It, it's basically um, water retention. Mm. And I always thought no salt, you know, mm. low sodium diet, no salt until I heard someone uh, who knew what she was talking about say, you need salt. And I was like, no, 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 I don't need salt. She definitely, you don't want sodium and you don't want white table salt. But she, what she said is you want that water to get into your cells and all of the minerals in, in, uh, Himalayan salt and Celtic salt will drive it into your cells. That's where the water belongs. The water belongs in your cells. And when it's not going into your cells, it's collecting outside where it doesn't belong in your legs, wherever inflammation, all over your body is collecting. And, um, and that's, what's the problem is the water's not getting into mm. your cells where it belongs and the salt 
has every mineral in it and those minerals drive it into your cells. So I started doing what she said, and that is I take a little um, crystal of Celtic salt and I put it in my mouth before every glass of water. I also salt my food with it every time generously. Did you just buy it at Sprouts or did you buy it? Um, I bought it at uh, Orchard, a uh, health food store. Celtic it's just a, ba- a bag of, of it. Celtic salt. So um, that's another thing, like high blood pressure patients are told, don't, don't, no salt, right? And you felt better and, since you've been. Oh, I've had health. no swelling in my ankles None ever since I started doing that. that when, awesome? when did you start that? Um, just a few weeks ago. Uh, let's see. I have a low level laser. It's pretty awesome. Oh, that's nice, Robin. You'll have to tell us about that. Um, any recommended resources? I always thought that science considered old wives tales would be a great, uh, medical right. dissertation, True. right? Um, you know what? Definitely look up Dr. Um, uh, what did I say? Her name was, um, Michael, Sandra, Michael. Um, it's, if you want to look up her website, it's unified, unified something it's spelled u-n-i-f-y-d unified something.com i'll have to look it up and put it in uh on our page but right now i just want to transition really fast you guys and then we're going to go off air we're going to do some powerful praying you guys some of you know my grandbaby was healed completely of a cyst that was that was not allowing for his brain to develop it was completely uh, it just disappeared. And (laughs) it's because of these prayers. Uh, I'm taught it's just who God is, right? It's who you all are. You're, you're walking in faith. And I just so much appreciate that. So we're going to pray for a girl. Uh, she's 47. Her name is Tracy Bremer. She is a friend of our families. And she has children uh, that she still want, would love to raise and continue uh, uh, being a mom to. It's too early for her to go and be with Jesus. It's not her time. I'm just going to declare that right now, Tracy, when you watch this, it's not your time. She has cancer and she is in need of a a bone marrow transplant and they have not found a match for her. I think it's amazing that we have technology that we can even do bone marrow transplants. Praise the Lord for that, right? So If y'all want to pray for her, we're going to do that in a minute, but I'm going to put, um, I will put it in the, um, on the YouTube, uh, her care page where you can spread the word. We need a a donor between the ages of 18 and 40 to be Mm -hmm. a match. And I need this to go viral friends. I want you to share this video. I want you to share her, um, her link. Um, we, we can get this person that is the perfect match and we can save her life. We can, we can just be the body of Christ and bring that technology that he gave us to heal one another, um, to her life. And I believe that for you, Tracy, I believe God is visiting you right now, wherever you are. She's in Southern California. I believe the energy force, the life force and the light force of God is going to surround you and it's going to begin to heal you and take back all, like just begin to dissolve all the cancer. It's going to leave right now in your body in Jesus name. Now, those of you who want to just get on here, we're still recording. So be aware of that want to get on here and say a few quick words for her do so do not feel pressured but tracy we are going to go offline in a minute and we're going to go after this <laughs> in um in our prayers okay um if any of you want to do that just raise your hand right now okay if not i understand sometimes it's a little um intimidating to get in front of people um um to pray so um Anyone, if you raise your hand, just go ahead and unmute yourself and go for it. Okay, so um, I'm, my name's Helena and I'm gonna pray for Tracy. But first I wanted to give a very condensed uh, testimony of healing that my friend Brandy knows about that happened about 
10, no, nine years ago, because my daughter's nine. So I had 11 miscarriages before I got pregnant with my daughter. And I'm sorry, I'm going to get emotional. But, um, you know, I kept losing my babies. I kept dying. And I kept thinking, like, God, have you forsaken me? Like, why am I not being healed? Um, hold on, honey. Go, go back downstairs and be careful. And um, anyway, I just remember asking a pastor, like, should I pray and ask God to heal my baby? And she told me no. And so it caused me to have an offense, like you guys were talking about. And um, then I had to let that go. And I had to write down a list of all these people and organizations and churches that I had to forgive and release this uh, death, the spirit of death that was over my life. And um, anyway, so with my pregnancy with my daughter, I went in, they said, no heartbeat, no fetal pull, another miscarriage. And I just remember saying, no, greater is he that is in me than he wow. that is in the world. I'm not going to take this death sentence. And I called my friend Brandy um, and we prayed and talked about this. And I just said, God, if the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me, then raise my daughter up. If the same power wow. that knit us together in our mother's womb if this is true if this is real then put her back together and breathe life into her body right now and i called her out by name he gave me her name when i was five years old and her name is talia which means dew of heaven and tracy this sentence that's over your life i want you to forgive anybody that hurt you anybody that cursed you bless those who curse you if it's your father if it's your mother if it's your grandparents say a blessing over them to release that generational curse of death over your life right now in the name of jesus every cell in your body is going to begin to vibrate and heal and i feel it it's so strong in my body i can't even stand father god i just thank you so much for this healing in her body that the gates of hell will not prevail against her and her family and her life and her legacy she is not done she is going to dip into your well, into your living water, and you will breathe life into every cell in her body right now in Jesus' name. Um, if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to blow my shofar in, in the prayer. Yeah, go for it. Awesome. That is an amazing testimony, my friend, Helena. It's so good to have you today and to hear that awesome testimony. Wow, wow, wow. You know, you, you are stirring up faith by telling that testimony um, for people. Uh, you know, the enemy doesn't want people to think that um, they can actually get healed and testimonies just take off that doubt, you know. So anyone else raise your hand. Um, she will see this later if you pray. Um, when we go off, she won't see it. Um, so if you want to be heard, um, again, please share this video. Please share the link that I'm going to uh, put with the video. And let's go after it for her. Myra, are you going to pray, friend? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for that testimony, Lord. Father, you are greater than any technology and any medicine. Father God, you are the great physician. And we just lift up to you this sister, Father God, that we may not know in person, but Lord, we have love for her because she's connected to us because we're part of the body of Christ. And I believe right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that not only are you going to heal her from this cancer, Father God, but you're going to do a whole fall of just everything. Everything's got to go. The cancer's got to go, the mindset, Father God, the generational curses, everything has to go, Father God. And you're going to use this opportunity, Lord, to just do it. And um, and I want to give a testimony. My mom has cancer and she's like better. Everything else is better. Her cholesterol is better. Wow. Like everything else is better. And so I believe, God, that you're going to use this. This is not from you, but you're going to use this, Father, to just um, bring um healing not only to her father god but to her family to those around her father you're going to use this um testimony in order to to like annette said to bring faith to bring forth faith in people to break through the doubt father god in the name of jesus and i pray that no one else no one else in her family would have it that there wouldn't be fear of of inside of her of 
her family having it or anyone in her family have fear of getting it. Just like what Annette was saying and Melissa was saying, whatever you focus on, you know, it'll grow and it, they, they will not focus on the cancer. They will focus on the healer and they will believe that their family and those that they lay hands on, Father God, whether family or not, will be healed. And I believe that, Lord, for everyone who's on this Zoom right now that is participating, Lord, via a computer or now or in the future, it doesn't matter, Father. I pray that your healing power would just go through these these channels, Father, of, of internet um, connection, Father God, and touch every cell every cell, Father God, every cell that is not working according to your power, according to your, um, your will, Father God, any, anything that is blocking, Lord, um, <clears throat> healing, whether it be, Lord, mindsets or, or whatever it is, Father, we just come against it. We just break it down right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood over that blockage. And we say that the blood flows. It flows through us. It flows in, in this Zoom, Father God, to, to reach beyond, Lord, the few of us that are on here, but may it go viral. Like Annette said, may it just reach deep down into people's hearts, Father God, may, may it reach communities around the world, Lord, because that's the kind of God you are. Your hand is big. Your hand reaches far, Lord. And just like castor oil, Father God, you, you can penetrate and you can move and you can, you're like, you're like the ocean, Father God, you can break through. I just see like people right now getting healed in the name of Jesus who for years, they're just like at the shore and, and, and they feel like the waves aren't coming. And I just see waves going over people right now in the name of Jesus. And it's like the blood washing over them. And I just, I receive that for myself. I receive that for my family. I receive that for anybody, Lord, who's watching this in the name of Jesus. We just know that you're awesome, Lord. And we love you for that. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow, wow. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Prayers for Tracy. I, I will. Um, so I was sitting here. I was going to wait, but since she said she'll be doing the recording, I was like, film, let it go ahead. I wanted to look up the name Tracy. And I've got a smile on my face because it means brave warrior. <laughs> and I love that. I think that's so beautiful. And um, it made me think about what I went through. Short testimony. Y'all, I think some of y'all know this, but Helena is my friend, by the way, I invited her. And what happened to her daughter happened to my son with Helena. She prayed for me over the phone, stood with me. Uh, the Lord led us not to tell too many people, just me, her, and close family. And uh, so my heart's beating really fast. <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, so same thing happened. I had lost two babies. Um, matter of fact, I just realized I might need to forgive some that have talked to me <laughs> as well and told me that... Uh, God, God just wanted me with two kids and no more and that kind of thing. So anyways, I stood against that. Uh, same story. My child was healed. I had the same thing like she did. I had spotting, bleeding, everything. We stood in faith and we used John 10, 10. And uh, then at two years old, he had a near drowning and the enemy tried to take him again. He was raised back to life. He was declared, um, well, he wasn't declared dead, but we knew he was dead. They were given CPR. He wasn't coming back. I heard he was dead and I spoke life over him that he'll live and not die and declare the glory of the Lord. So I speak that over you, Tracy, you're going to have a walking testimony. You're a fighter, just like my son was the doctor. They told us that he was going to be sick for a long time. It was literally two days, two days, and he is functioning well. He is a testimony. So I can't wait to hear. And his name is Caleb, uh, which means faithful. So you're a warrior. So I just speak to your body right now that every cell Everything you've heard in this video will just light up in your body like a bunch of lightning bugs and they'll just dance and <laughs> give God the glory. And I just, I just thank you, Father. And um, if it's okay, can I, 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 I would like to sing a song over her. Do we have time for that? Go ahead. Just not a long one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Ha, 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 man. Ha, man. Ha, ha, man. Ha, ha, ha. 
Amen. So Tracy, you are blessed and the Lord may his face shine upon you. I can't wait to hear the testimony. He is healing you right now. You are healed. We love you in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Presence of God. Oh my goodness. Anyone else before we go off? Okay. Here's your last chance. And Tracy, be healed in Jesus name. We love you. We're going to continue praying for you. Uh, let this video go viral. Share it with everyone, friends. It's going to be on YouTube. It'll be on our Facebook page and just send it out. Like everyone needs this, this hope filled message. They need the energy of life. They need hope again. Hope heals you. Hope in Jesus will heal the body. I believe it. And so don't be shy about sharing this and yeah. getting her care page out there. That is the most important thing. We want people all over the world to get this because yeah. You know, it's hard to find a match. I, I love that so, you blew the shofar. I like know. The frequency of victory. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. We love you guys. We're going to go off uh, record right now and continue praying for Tracy and uh, each other. But till next week, be loved, be holy because you are holy. Jesus made you holy and be made well in Jesus name. Bye-bye. See you.